All right, we've got to be relatively quick as... Jesus. I can't catch a break with noise. Two very boring minutes later. All right, we've got to be relatively quick with this because this thing has to be out on the water tomorrow. Let's get into this. All right, so for the leak in the keel, uh, we need these things. Hatch cover, plastic knife that will go with the Bondo glass, a Dremel or any other such type thing, and a sanding pad. Let's get into this. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is we got these two cans of contact cement. This is not going the way I wanted it to. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, I don't think this is working. How am I gonna turn my camera off? Oh. All right, so all we're gonna be doing that spot is extremely weak and so we're just going to be filling that area with with that bondo product and not much just about half an inch or so we want to make sure that it uh, dries well cures well so one of the suggestions over time has been that you use the exact same material that you cut out of your yak to do the repairs. The problem with that is that in order to get that to happen, you have to heat up both that and the kayak. And if I do that at this point, no good, no bueno at all. Everything's gonna deform and then you've got a big problem back there. So we're gonna do this in a way that has actually worked for me on other Pelicans in the past that are built out of this Ramex material. I'm pretty sure that everything they do at this point is Ramex material. So this applies to every kayak that Pelican currently makes. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do is cut an access hole. There are two possibilities. You can either do it right here, it fits in that spot. You could do it here, but it kind of seems like it's gonna overlap this and would probably look like shit. It might give you slightly better access to the actual spot that we're gonna be working on, but yeah. I don't think that's gonna work. It, I, I think the top lip is gonna overlap this silly little V-shaped thing that they put in there for no freaking reason whatsoever. I'm gonna do mine down here. Uh, let's get on this because I am very limited on time. This has to be done this afternoon. So let's get into it. This is a super cheap hatch. Link will be in the description. It's about, uh, I don't know, seven, eight bucks, something like that. Doesn't come with anything. Doesn't come with a gasket. Doesn't come with hardware. Uh, we'll deal with that later. that we did that was because you can't really get a jigsaw in there looks like absolute garbage all right so I absolutely suck with these things 
<laughs> it's freaking rotary tools and it was trying to ride all over the place um, hopefully you're better with yours So I can actually see the breach. I I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it there, but hopefully we can. But we've got to move on. Got to dry this thing out, sand it from the inside, and then get to work. We got limited time for this, so let's get moving. Nothing crazy. This is a 80 grit. Just kind of roughing up the surface a little bit in preparation for the Bondo material. Valerie in her infinite wisdom and smart ass ways just brought out this. <laughs> nice. Folks, if you ever want to get pissed off really, really quickly, try to shoot with a GoPro 10 in 4K when it's 90 degrees out. Valerie just pulled off and that's what the pepperoni is doing. Oh. Poor puppy. Poor puppy. Your mama's gone forever. <laughs> Such a girl. All right, so we're gonna start working on this. The first thing that the directions require is that you need the hardener before applying. Stir it up. It's about a three inch round thing and then put the hardener across it. And mix that up. Should harden in about 15 to 30 minutes. It's a little humid out here today, so might not be so quick. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna kind of fill that space. Don't get crazy. Don't try to go too deep with it. I think we're good. You can see the fibers off of that. So now we're gonna let that sit. And I think we're done. Pretty much that simple. Clean up the edge. Because this is perfectly usable in the future. And there you go. I used this uh, a couple years ago and it's still perfectly good. As long as you treat it well, it will treat you well. So going back to the last video, we've fixed this thing. It's really that easy. I fully recommend that you do it this way. If you have any major problems on one of these kayaks, 
it's gonna be in the keel. That's the way to do it. It's a very inexpensive repair on a relatively inexpensive kayak. So again, even if you beat your stuff up like I do, there's a solution. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one.